What's going on YouTube? Opie Gamer here, and I just needed to make this video regarding Doom Eternal. I've been putting it off for a little, a little bit now. Um, we're gonna name this video a message to Ed, CC, Hugo Martin, and Marty Stratton. There are two main things I want to bring up in this video, and this is like my fifth take, so I'm just gonna go with it to get it out there, hopefully so it can be worked on before this big patch, because I'm seeing more and more people talk about it on the uh, Bethesda.net and YouTube comment sections, etc, etc. It's the weapon wheel for consoles. I want to get things out of the way. First and foremost, I want to state that I've tested DualShock version 1 and 2, both Bluetooth and hardwired, the 2.0 or higher um, USB cord to eliminate latency. I've taken the same controllers, put it on Street Fighter V where it has a nice little tool within the menu that allows you to push the button and then see the visual representation highlighted on the screen to give you an idea of how many milliseconds or if any input lag is, is displayed and I've had none. Um, so right now I'm playing on the Scuf Impact and I've also done this with the DualShock like I said and I've even hooked up an arcade stick with Samwa Denshi buttons because they are you know, the most responsive button I can think of to, to pull up a weapon wheel in this case seeing if there's any lag. With all those tests being done I've come to a conclusion or two and I guess the the main topic is that there is a visual cue being presented on screen and that visual cue is telling the player that it's ready for an input when it's actually not. So the visual, visual cue is the weapon wheel that pops up and that insinuates it's ready for an input. And that input doesn't actually happen as fast as it would on, say, PC. Uh, having a keyboard, being able to bind your keys to certain weapons is is uh, an asset if you play on PC, but that that's not here, no here or there. Uh, quick background about myself: I'm an undergrad at Full Sail University, out of Florida. I understand a little bit about game design. I've been following this team since since you know Rage One, Mega Textures, and all that. Loved 2016's iteration. Loved Doom Eternal. It's one of my my favorite games of generation so far so this is not a bashing video whatsoever I just want to pass on a couple things that I think would improve the game tremendously um, this weapon wheel I don't know exactly what kind of code or priority system the developers of it are using but I assume that the priority system is is what's is what's happening here something's getting in the way this weapon wheel should be like at the forefront of all priority right so i was watching a couple videos and there's shout outs to this dude on youtube his channel is smvr and he's awesome at like devil may cry games and he started going nuts with doom eternal anything that's like high combo execution wise he, he's in it and you know we were talking back and forth about what his configuration was because i i couldn't quite get the the actual switch as fast as him and he explained a little bit about like how he remapped his, his PS4 Pro in the background like the button assignments under accessibility so that he can hit uh, L1 and have his right analog stick do the selecting and we also talked a little bit more about how it was kind of inconsistent and then some people in the comment section it kind of flared up and they were saying like yeah 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 i understand I get, I get that all the time as well so i started to do some tests and what i came down to what it it comes down to in my mind is that the way let me show you first off how my controls are 
because I'm using the scuff impact at the moment and like I said I've tested all the peripherals I could in every which way so it is not a hardware issue whatsoever um, this is how I have mine set up my L3 is my middle back paddle uh, left side and my equipment launcher is middle right side and then dash and jump are left and right paddles respectively so it doesn't matter what you have switch weapon slash weapon wheel hold on if it's L1 R1 whether you prefer the right analog stick to be the selector or you want the left one to be the selector it doesn't none of this matters you just have to apply what I'm saying to your own layout if you want to perform these tests and see if you're getting any input lag I'm measuring anywhere from like 6 to 12 frames of lag and um, going back to which stick selects the weapon if you have R1 be your weapon wheel or quick switch you it will automatically assign your right analog stick to select if it's on the left side it will usually select or of course you do have the left analog stick to select this this doesn't make a difference I've tried swapping it around it doesn't make a difference you can go into the dashboard of PlayStation swap L1 and R1 and have L1 with the right stick and it also doesn't make a difference it's just it's accessibility and preference that's all that is so even in the first five minutes of me talking well it's already been five minutes there has been a couple times where I'm switching weapons and you're seeing my screen move now on your screen if it's L1 see my selector is on my look and I'm also playing inverted okay so outside of the weapon wheel down is up up is down but again that doesn't matter you might be seeing if I'm selecting this the weapon wheel is up but you're seeing my character or the crosshair however you want to say it is actually moving left and right now that'd be okay if it was a timing thing but because my weapon wheel is coming up and I'm actually selecting the weapon and I'm letting go of it and I know that a the analog stick is now back in the dead zone there should be no no instruction for the game engine to receive an input that I'm looking anywhere on the opposite analog stick it would be doing like this the re you know you'd be mo strafing left strafing right uh, moving forward and backward etc diagonal so basically one option I have to completely uh, fix the weapon wheel if possible again I'm, I'm no scientist that did those guys are the greatest I'm just trying to throw some ideas out there is to make the quick swap a double tap button or give the option for it to be double tap that re that way when you hold R1 in my case from now on I'm just going to be speaking in my situation what I have my controls laid out to when you press R1 the engine the code the system is has to determine whether you're going to just press and depress it or whether you're going to hold it for the weapon wheel to pop up right now I feel there's some sort of latency happening when the engine is trying to make that decision and I don't know what what it is it's, it feels like it's about four to five frames be, before it even pops up if you can hear me pressing the button audio is sometimes a little more accurate than visual so it, it's popping up about four five six frames after I, I depress it so if you had double tap the quick switch not only can you easily double tap R1 before the weapon is ready to fire it would also eliminate the option that the game has to decide if beyond the press is is actually going to be a hold from the player which would bring up the weapon wheel somewhere in there there 
there's a delay. Now, switching back and forth is not exactly a problem, but I also noticed this. I'm going to put it on the plasma rifle and the combat shotgun, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to twirl to the right, and I'm going to... If you see the weapon wheel, like right there, right there, right there, okay, in that time it took. So it took four times for it to actually select in the direction I was holding, which would have given me the heavy cannon. So that shows that there's a visual cue that's not yet ready for an input to be received from the player. So before this even pops up, it should be ready to, to register anything that the analog stick um, is inputting to select the weapon. If that is possible, if that is possible to clean up, then there will be no problems. If, if this can happen instantaneously, double tap to switch and you can lower the threshold on the hold so that it pops up and even if you're holding right, maybe 20%, it's automatically gonna go there. You don't have to worry about, because this game has full customization, and then you have the PlayStation accessibility side of it. Whether it's your left stick, your right stick, your looking stick, or your movement stick, it's not going to matter because it's when you have that weapon wheel up, everything else is locked down. The only thing you can do when the weapon wheel is truly active, not just visually, but the game locks down. You can only jump, and you can do the motion that the stick opposite of your selector so if my selector stick is the right analog you can look or strafe basically those are the only two things you can do with the weapon wheel up you can't toggle your grenade you can't take out your sword you can't flame belch you can't do any of that you can't blood punch okay so a mix of that and R1, in my case again, it can be whatever it's mapped to. This would be the real fix, in my opinion. If R1 was a double tap to get to the quick swap, right? And then holding it is an alt. Or you could just get rid of the double tap. One tap would be the auto switch, right? the quick swap and then pressing it and pressing square and I'm just gonna give you an example pressing R1 square since square is my chainsaw but you can't chainsaw with the weapon wheel up R1 and square would give me my rocket launcher R1 circle heavy cannon um, you could use all the d-pad buttons you could use the triggers you could use everything but X and the left analog stick in my case so you have plenty of buttons. You can use L3, R3, L2, R2, L1, all the D-pads, all the buttons except X, all the face buttons. And you'd be able to select any given weapon. And if there is a problem, if, I, if my count is off, you can put the BFG and the Unmaker on the D-pad because like I said before, looking at the controls like right now I'm not using left d-pad I think there was an option to, to free up another button oh the switch weapon mod this cut this brings me to my third point with the alt configuration you could hold down R1 and it say you say I was on again plasma rifle and combat shotgun and I wanted to go to the rocket launcher but I remembered that I have it on I have it on the first mod right you would just hit R1 square square and that would be the equivalent of hitting R1 over and down which is default to up I switched the mod switched it down and that way it comes up. 
So it would be R1 square, R1 triangle, R1 plus circle, R1 plus left deep pad, R1 plus L3 or R3, and then tapping those respective buttons twice would swap the mod that you had last. That's all I kind of wanted to say regarding the weapon wheel. Uh, prior videos I've tried to make have been kind of sloppy and all over the place. Again, these, this has been a topic that I've been reading on Bethesda.net, community topics. Um, I did a little post about how I'm trying to make this video. It's under general discussion, meat hook, skip console, and it kind of digressed into uh, SMVR, who I mentioned earlier, how he's on console, switching weapons like a god, and then how I wanted to kind of put a couple ideas out there before the update because it would be literally like like playing on PC mechanically. There would be no mechanical difference between keyboard and mouse except for those of you saying, you know, the aiming with the mouse is better. That's no error there. I'm talking about actual input latency. There wouldn't be a reason for the weapon wheel with the alt method in place, even if it's just as an option. And lastly, I wanted to just touch on the air control. <clears throat> I personally do not like it as a rune. 2016's Doom had air control. It was great once you unlocked it. This game was all about giving us the, you know, the, the movement, right? The double dash, speeding up that double dash so as soon as you hit the ground, you know, it gives you a nice audible cue to, that you have it back again. I feel that air control is just a waste of a rune. If anything, it should be on like the fundamentals. It should just be added to this. If for some reason, like uh, speedrunners want to use three runes that are not air control, I can understand that. Like some use blood fueled and uh, I don't know. Some people like save and throw, but they want equipment fiend. Like that, that's great, fine. But from what I've seen, a lot of people always pick air control. And it kind of sucks to have to just waste it. It should be just a mechanic. And there's more than just that reason alone for it. I remember an interview on, you know, on, I've watched all of the interviews from 2016's Doom to Eternal. You know, Hugo Martin, you're the greatest. But I remember you quoting, quote, uh, quoting you, I'll, I'll quote you in saying, that you were describing battle mode and you were explaining how battle mode will be of the campaign slayer, like the end game slayer, and you'll be able to perform like that leveled up slayer in battle mode. Well, I got my nightmare, my ultra nightmare finished, right? I have my gold. Um, I've tried battle mode a few times and I love the concept. And seeing that they didn't have that you guys didn't put air control in there as even a level one round upgrade or it's like i said i think it should just be a mechanic that's just there is a huge disappointment frankly i want to get into that online experience and that environment and it just sucks that i after playing like the campaign for days on multiple different files save files it's kind of discouraging because I know once I jump I'm stuck in that straight line now I know there's been lag issues online as well and I hear that I don't know whether dedicated servers are coming or um, lag fixes tracking issues are going to be improved if that's true then I'm pretty sure it's, it's okay to, to, it's easier to track a slayer that has air movement it's only about an extra three to four feet and a change of direction. I don't see a way it can be abused too much. Um, and that's pretty much it. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. I just know that you know, if I was looking, like, you see how I'm kind of like trying to quick swap, right? But what's happening is I'm, I'm getting distorted, right? I'm looking inch by inch in all these different directions but I'm getting the weapon I, I'm executing 
what I need to execute, what the game rules are telling me to execute, right? And it's like an if and when statement. So like, if R1 is pressed and select weapon is selected and released, and you're not holding the analog, you should not have any any movement, left or right analog stick. So because I'm, if I wasn't getting the swap, I'd be like, okay, my timing's off. But because the swap is coming through and I know I'm letting go of the joystick in time, I, it looks like I'm doing it a little bit easier now, but see, right, I moved to the right a little bit, I moved down a little bit, or looked to the right, looked down. It showed me that I did the respected action. So like, this is three frames. But yet, the joystick's not quite ready for the input yet. Input yet, excuse me. So that's another... I'll, I'll be gracious, I'll be very generous saying two frames. Then you let go, that has to be at least one frame at a 60 FPS game. And then the animation of the gun actually coming out has to be at least a frame before it's ready to fire, right? It's probably a couple more. So we're talking, you know, upwards of 10, 12, 15 frames before you can quick swap. So I really think the alt method would be an awesome option. I think it'd be great to just be able to go in there and then have like a tab that says weapon selection option, uh, alternate, and then you assign it, or weapon wheel, or the double tap method with an increased priority to the weapon wheel. Make that weapon wheel like number one on priority. I mean, it just needs to happen. A lot of players, like, I, I'm not kidding. In the past two months I've been thinking about this, I've probably seen like 400 comments on this same topic. And that, I'm just one person browsing YouTube and, and forums and Reddit and whatnot. So I guarantee there's a lot more out there that love this game. They want to execute it on the level that they know they can. And this is an in-game mechanic issue not a peripheral one like I've stated before and I just hope something can be done about it uh, love you guys over at it Bethesda you guys doing a great job all you guys playing Doom Eternal you know slay on rip and tear I hope everyone's healthy stay indoors when you can get some fresh air when you can I love you all I hope this helped and I hope it reaches the ears intended thank you all very much love you peace out